Sông Trình Cười Ông chùm rét bằng to sao nào cả Ông chùm rét xung chùm rét Lúc bởi nhá nâng mì thịt vi nông mục đàm đang rõt bạc vì ní Tha phí vì liên bỏ lúc nơi xoan một phê này tì tiệt Xung chơi lúc bởi nhá Hello, Mr. Witness. Can you hear me? Sáng về nhà. Lúc sạc sấy, số số đấy ta lúc lưu nhôm như vậy thế. Bạc lưu. Sir, we talked this morning about how you had come across a funeral and persons burning incense. And you told them it was okay, but if anyone found out, you could all get killed. Why was it that people could get killed for burning incense during the regime? Why was it that people could get killed for burning incense during the regime? When you say they did not believe in ceremony, can you explain what was the policies you were instructed on regarding Buddhism? What did your superiors tell you about the practice of religion? Well, sir, as a former monk, you must have been interested in that subject. In your heart, did you remain a Buddhist? But during the regime, is it correct you didn't practice your religion? Or if you did, you kept it hidden. Is that correct? Why is that? What did you think? Uh, why did you think that it would be dangerous to admit or to let people know you were practicing? บ้านเจริญกึศฐานนั่งทัดแพลกนั่งสืบกรุ๊ปนักประชาชนบางเกิดดังทางกรุ๊ปศาสนาบ้านยมคลายบารมีด้วยเช่นบ้านประชาชน
คิวสมพรนงระบอบนุดาริตีพวกมันขยมมันได้บานจูบลอยตอนเลยบานและ yet In t e t s a m b a t s book that I quoted, he talks about you quoting from Pol Pot. He said Pol Pot asked where people were going, who were going to be executed. And in the, bit, in the audio tape I played of your interview, you talked about attending meetings with Moon c h e i Is it still your position now in court under oath that you never met any, never saw any of these leaders? Sir, my colleague has some questions for you. I'm out of time. Thank you. Khang Dam Nang Sa Phrey Nha Chiet Mien Sum Nuo Kla Chong Su Ban To Tiet Tak Nyom Ao Hai Lok Sa Sai Som Akun. Chu Bat Tham Som Grup Lok Thien Som Grup Ang Sai Mna Ga Teng Mul. Nhom Bat Mu Sai Lien Chi Tam Nang Sa Phrey Nha Chiet Sa Phrey Nha Rong Chiet. Khai Nik Nhom Mien Sum Nuo Tu Lop Thien Bat. Mùi chùm nốn hay chẳng xua từ lục sạc xây hay lục sạc xây chùi bằng phứ đoán xa mà ca tầng mùi Khi em chắp ở rõm từ lưu bê bì liếm mùi đại lục từ bàn kê plác đâu Ai từ bùm rai ca nâu sọc bà rai Ta lục ách Bình chạy bàn tiết hà đoán tiết bàn tiết hà ta bê nà bật bật đại lục Từ bùm bình ca nâu sọc bà rai เปรียนั้นยมลายจำคลานั้นคือว่าอาจีบแค่ปนใบจัดใบปนบริจันบัตรนับเปรย์ได้ลูกตัวดอลสกบรายนั่งตาลูกมีดังอัมพีกาจีตุ่มนบหรือก็เลิกตุ่มนบไอเด้บาดดังหลังไปเรียนตอนนั้นเคยติดจิตอ่าไฮบานไฮจิตแปดสิบเพียรอยไฮลูกดังเอาไว้คลาลูกอันนี้ยัยลมบัดมันติดบานเถอะบาดเรียนดังคือพลอตตอลพลุนเรียนกับบานตัวเรจบานติดจิตในจุดนัดกับไลน์มวยจะหาทับพนมกับเปย์เนื้อเป็นนาได้แต่ลูกเตยจีนเนื้อกาทานเนื้อพนมกับไปนั่งให้เนื้อตีนั่งลูกทัวร์ไว้คลาสให้ประชาชนนั่งเลือกตัวนบนั่งกี่ทัวร์ไว้คลาสขยมเตยโจรวมจีชิมวยนั่งกำลังประชาชนเนื้อกันไหลนั่งอ่านให้ขยมกับบ้านเร็วตอนพลุนไอ้ชิมวยนั่งกอดมาผู้พัฒนาเกิดตระกูลสมรภูมิหายตอนจังเงือกยมกันในจอมในอะไรนั้นดำไปบางทึกตะปะปะลูกมีนภาษาทายลูกในจอมนั้นคือลูกในระยะเปรียบหายประมาณไหนลูกอาจจะเจอประมาณที่บานไปเจอขนมมาทั้งไงนั้นขยมตายเชียงเตาหมดร้อนเตาบานเรศไม่บุญจึงบานเอาการวินิจจกเตาแสเตาบานลูกจ้องหรือยิ่งถ้าลูกเตาเรียงรอไงตาไว้เด็กยอมใหญ่นั่งตั้มเตาแดดเต้บาทคือตรมเตาได้บาทตรมเตาหายบาทเช่นในขนมกาจิกาทานในขนมกับเปาอีนั่งตาเมียนเกลียบจอมปิธีสมโพดใบกาทานหรือก็อย่างไม่ได้เต้ลูกอ่านจุลีบานเต้กระไรนั่งมันบานสมโพดไอ้ได้บานก่อนเลยคือแผ่นกานั่งกุจิอ่อยหายขนมเยอะ
มาแค่หรือปีแค่หรือไม่แค่เป็นกำลังอย่างชะตามีนักดักนอมมาช้ำหรือก็ภูมิเพียนาได้จบมาบักในการทานนั่งได้เต้ในจอจบจมูกนั่งลุกได้เต้บักคือมีนทางดับบอลภูมิเพียเติมมาดอมมาดอตาลูกไอ้ปราบานเตถาตากาทานุจีกาทานรบบอภูมิเพียดมบอนหรือก็อย่างไรได้กาทานนั่งจีการาทานรบบอภูมิเพียตาเนี่ยนักที่เนี่ยกบกรองกาทานนั่งลูกไอ้ปีเจ็บบานชบานเตกาทานนั่งคือภูมิเพียดังไงเหมือนกาทานนั่งเวทต่อจอดปีอาจจะตนุกใส่น้ำมวยแมกรานจังจังโลกจังยิ่งท่าภูมิเพียจีเนกุบกรองจังไงตาตั้งใจที่ให้บุภูมิเพียเนกุบกรองชดดับบอลให้นั่งสกลุ่งทุ่ยได้ภูมิเพียกินได้มอกรุบกรองเป็นดับบอลก็โจลมอกนั่งนั่งได้ด้านมือตามด้านมือภายการนั่นเลยไอ้สระนั้นเลยจอดตัวนั่นหมอไปเอาเงินจำมือแต่ลูกไอ้ปราบบ้านที่ขณะพุ่มพี่นั่งช่วยให้นั่งขณะดำบอลได้กุ๊กรองในกาทานนั่งช่วยได้บ้านช่วยไก่ป๊อกพุ่มพี่ไอ้ดำบอลช่วยเพื่อนชกนงกาดักนอมในไหลกาทานกัมปายนั่งตาเมียนไปจีจุนประมาณเนี้ยโจรวมขนงกาเลิกตุนบในไหลนั่งลูกไอ้ไปเจาะมันเด้ขยมวันละปันสมานบาดเวียหาไปหาจีบใบรอยคนบันพนมมันเป็นใครได้ลูกไอ้กิดมาดองเตียนเมื่อใบร้อยหรือก็จานเชียงหนึ่งกว่าเนื้อสั้นติดยึดยมทายังเว็บบางเฮยทางการบ้านลูกสาวใส่เมียนไอ้กระซ่ามุ้ยได้จีกระจมเพียบบอลลูกจีมุ้ยหนึ่งเออมันแฉมโดนไอ้กระซ่ากามบุจีคือไอ้กระซ่าเล็กเออบ่อยสละกายสมมุ้ยสายสายสมบูรณ์ไอ้กษานั้นบินอีอันจีพิซาอังเล่โซนมุ้ยมุ้ยมุ้ยพรมุ้ยมุ้ยพรามโซนจีพิซาขมายโซนโซนผมเปิลบ่อยมุ้ยปีบุญผมบ่อยดอลบุญผมบุญจีพิซาพรังโซนมุ้ยมุ้ยโซนมุ้ยโซนบ่อยบุญดอลบ่อยพรามในขนมนั้นลูกบ้านจีท่าเกี่ยวกับลูกท่าจ่อเตอร์ตามกาทานเต้ลูกฉลาดท่าบ้านโดยเจ้ากาทานจีบปลายนึกกันไล่กับป้ายนึกปลายอันนอโดยเจ้ากองฉลาดนี่รอบเหมือนยมจ่อเตอร์จบเป็นคนขมิขมิบินดับเตะสมบัยหนึ่งไม้เอิ้งจมใจแต่กับนัดท่าขยมท่าไอ้เลยยืนอย่างยุดับทั้งไงเอาตัวลิงเตะถ้าลูกชายตอบอย่างไม่ได้จมพูจมลอยแต่ลูกบ้านชลอยนึ่งจมูกมันแฉมโดนไอ้กระแสการมีชีวิตการชนะปีปอนบ่อยนั่งบ้านมันนั่งมันติดกึ่งเมียนชานบ้านไอ้เนื้อสอลใส่สอลนั่งตัวเนื้อบ้านไปเจาะยังเห็นแต่ใบร้อยหายชมนักกระทาตบเตะบ้านตะลีสลบก็ตัวจุ๊บนั่งไม่เอาบางพอนแล้วคือกงขมวยขย่มตายแต่ไปโยตการทหารอ๋อหลังจากย่อมนึกเคยถาย่อมเติร์ดทั่วยังไม่คือเติร์ดแต่เมียนเป็นเป็นเลี้ยงหรือก็บางประกาศเอาของจะลัดหรือบางพอนเลยนึกแต่สมบัติยังอ๋อคนรู้อ๋อคน
lúc lại khay khay thế bạn môn này lúc ban viên bá sát tha môn này mình tách cứ miền trời ta môn mình tách nó là lúc mình bá sát nó pin ná hay trời nó miền bãi bầm ăn nè đấy trời nó mưa cứ chôn hay chỉ trầm bùn mùi bòn này mà nó mặc cái nát nó ai đón mờ nẹt đây thế lục rồi mờ nẹt đây thế ví bậc pan và man rồi nộp nấng và bị tụt bốn tam niệm man nó cứ ai chôn đón mờ Ông chung ra, xong chung rip xua tới mi tư vị đàm ở đằng rõ bạc bình đi Ta lúc miên xung ngô tế, lưu xa xây rụm đi Bạn xung cực đồ bật thiên, dự ơ khi nhầm ổn miên xung ngô tế đồ bật thiên Xung chung bê bê lê chung xa hạp đê nha Côn lúc mi tư vị Xung chung lúc bê nha mặt tò Hai bà mán tiết đáy lúc tiên Lúc nó đâm đi tí tiết bạn ở ở ở con lục thiên lúc mấy miền bắc xa tha lúc tây giờ miền bắc xa tha môn đi mình tây môn đi mình tây còn tây bắc tam ai cả xa đại nhom an chun lục nắng cứ pi đại lục cho chuộc nắng nước nông ai cả xa nắng cứ lục ban chỉ hai miền rộp mờ nẹ nó chẳng môn đi mình tây nắng lục trong miền bắc xa tha giống mấy vĩnh một lần thầm trong dây thà một mặt hai bị khai một lần nợ cạp thành để nợ tôi giỏi khai rồi nước nông ca lược tùm nộp nợ cầm bài nâng ạ xua thà ta khăng khung bỏ lục nâng lục đạp phèn ca dạng mách tờ ai thân ạc rồng bỏ lục nông ca thuê ca nghe nâng ภายการนั้นทางตำบลทางเพียรนั้นกำหนดโดยเฉพาะกำหนดไข่ปีปีไข่ตัวใบไข่ตาลูกประชุมตาแผ่นกายอย่างไม่ได้ให้เอ่อ
cho cá sạn nơi rồi bỏ cái dòng mạch đá lục ảnh và bàn thế ông pi cá sạn nơi cá sạn nơi rồi bỏ cầm lăng nắng từ miền tòng miền ru được sòn thang ta miền ruộng cọp cọn ai thế rồi có miền nhà khác ăn miền ruộng đấy hay đấy nơi hà sơn sài và cứ ăn miền đấy cứ sạt đầy ruộng phần là ruộng về làm sao làm ăn mà về nó về về mình ăn cọp cọn thằng mà rồi phe rồi đấy bạn ta lục ăn Trong bàn tích hà ta nơi cả lãnh ca thân lực tình hụt nâng miên cốp ma nâng nề rì để thuê ca nâng tình hụt đại tế. Bạn mình là con dân lãnh, mình nề rì dụng cái chuẩn. Lúc này nhá lúc học bê lời. Bạn ở con lục thiến, xem xong mà xâm đô tiết đi. Tak lupa saya ajar perbandingan tiap hari kata tahan nang kiri bercop nang pin na, hai nang pin dari kiri bercop nang nang nak kiri mabat kata tahan nang. Jom sembahyang lalu tenar dengan nom, amat cem lalu kau tenar dengan nom pumpi. Kata tahan nang, ke penghari keroy ke, bah keroy ke abat bercop kata tahan nang ke abat mun mun a agak lain jam lek lek jom terus. Trong xong mấy lúc thì chị thả ta miên thả đặc đồm nào mà bật cả thả năng đẹp thế? Mình miên phụng phía. Lúc xong đáy lúc cài phốc nâng rồi cửa nà nà. Bạn, bạn, lúc cài phốc mà. Bà lúc thiên kiếm xong ổn xong đồ. Hồng chúng ta, ổn con lúc đi nhá. Chị mình to xong chơi lúc mình thử vì cả việc đầy lùn thì miên xong đúa tới xa xe đúng này. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Good afternoon, parties, and good afternoon to you, Mr. Witness. I will be asking you some questions on behalf of Mr. Nunchir. To explain to you in advance, I intend to be revisiting a lot of what you had discussed with the international prosecutor this morning, but I'll be doing so from a different angle. So, to begin, I want to refer you back to the last questions the prosecutor asked you before the lunch break. As you might recall, he asked you about whether you were ever required to investigate people and what the policy on enemies was. So by way of explanation, my first question relate to this general context. Now what I want to do is to begin by reading you something that you said in your statement to DCCAN. And again, this is something that you discussed a lot with the prosecutor this morning. This is document E3 slash 91149 on the 19th of June 2008, the ERM will be reading from for this quote in English on clay 01-11-6147 and in French 01-10-10-3-1 Mr. Witness, uh, this is the quote that I want to read to you. Quote, to be honest, I did not report or point out about the background of any individuals. This was not my stance. As I told you, I was also an outsider who came from a distant place. And then a little later, we go on to say, quote, I did not know the history of the people or their relatives in the village. So I informed my deputy secretary and all the members that the upper echelon assigned me to keep an eye on those whose activities were against the party at that time. Unquote. And here is the question, Mr. Witness. My understanding of your statement is that you did not 
report individual backgrounds, but we focused instead on keeping an eye on activities against the party. The question is, is my understanding correct? Thank you, Mr. Witness. And I should have said this earlier, but this quote, when you were saying this to DC Cam, you were speaking about the time in Barre District. So that's just for background for you. My next question is, do you know whether any other district secretaries or other cadres in authority positions also took a similar approach to you, focusing, that is, on activities rather than individual backgrounds? ដែលលើសកម្មភាពរបស់បុគ្គលទាំងអស់នោះតែប៉ុណ្ណោះមិនបានតាមដាតែលើប្រវត្តិរុក that's not a problem, Mr. Witness. Uh, let's talk a little bit more, though, about this idea of activities, because this is something that you elaborated on in some of your previous statements. So first of all, according to your understanding, what kind of activities would be considered activities against the party? Uh, this is a question that Thank you, Mr. Witness. That actually nicely relates to the next thing that I wanted to discuss with you. Uh, you spoke about similar activities in your written record of interview to the investigating judges of this court on the 14th of July 2009. So although you've just discussed that now, I will go over what it is that you said to the investigating judges because you added a little more detail there. Mr. President, this is document E3-5293. As I said, it's the WRI from the investigating judges, and the ERNs that I will be referring to are, in English, 0057 Mr. Witness, this is what um, the discussion was with the investigating judge. Question. Quote. Was it the role of a cooperative to report about the issue of security to the upper echelon? Answer. Yes, it was. For example, regarding, regarding the poisoning in the food. And a little later, the investigation continues. Question. Did anyone violate the policy of the Ankar? Answer, no. However, there were light offenders, which included those who came to work late, and they were advised. They used the term self-criticism at that time. These misconducts were not reported to the district. And then a little further, the investigation continues. Question. Quote. How serious was one's misconduct to have him or her brought to the district? Answer. Major misconducts included burning paddy fields. Question. To where were those with serious misconduct taken? Answer. 
they were taken to be re-educated for two or three days in a sub-district. End of quote. Mr. Witness, my understanding of your answers in that interview is that there were two kinds of offences and punishment. So let's talk first about offences. It seems you are describing light offences on the one hand and major misconduct on the other. Can you give a reaction to this and let me know if my understanding is correct? Thank you, Mr. Witness. Now let's focus on the first type of offence I just described, which are the light offences do I also understand correctly that according to your understanding, the punishment for light offences would be to do some self-criticism, but that these offences would not be reported to the district? Mr. Witness, I can only Thank you. And still talking about light offences, is my understanding also correct that light offences would include, for example, activities like coming in late to work? Mr. Witness, can you give any other examples of activities that would be considered light offences? Okay, Mr. Witness, now I'll move on to the second type of offence you've described, which is what you call major misconduct. So first question, do I understand correctly that, according to you, the punishment for these offences would be being reported to the district in this case, and then eventually being re-educated for maybe two to three days in a sub-district? Same sort of questions as last time. Is my understanding also correct that when it comes to offences of major misconduct, these types of offences included, as you said, poisoning, food and burning paddy seeds? I do understand that part, Mr. Witness, and we will get to that. Now, just one final question on these offences, even if they didn't occur in your area. Can you give me any other examples of other activities that would also have been considered major misconduct?
No problem at all, Mr. Witness. I'm now going to read you another quote from your written record of interview so that we can discuss a little bit more some specific comments you made regarding food poisoning. Mr. President, this is once again the written record of interview with document number E3-5293, dated 14 July 2009. The URNs that I'm going to be reading from are in English, 00351705, in Khmer, 00348845, and in French, 00367752. Mr. Witness, this is the quote. Quote. And the question from the investigator is as follows. Was it the role of the cooperative to report about the issue of security to the upper echelon? Your answer. Quote. Yes, it was. For example, regarding the poisoning in the food. And then you say, as you just said now, as a matter of fact, there was no such case, but it was just a precaution. Question. Was there ever an incident of poisoning in the food? Answer. No. It might happen in other sectors. The sector was the body that set out this plan. Mr. Witness, a few questions in reaction to this quote of yours. The first question is, do you agree with your your prior statement that it was the sector that set out the plan about reporting security incidents to the upper echelon. Do you also remember who it was in the sector that communicated this plan to you? Now, I understand, Mr. Witness, that you said that this kind of incident of food poisoning, of burning paddy fields, did not happen in your area. Do you know, however, whether these kinds of incidents happened in other places, perhaps other districts, other sectors? Do you have any knowledge of this? No problem, Mr. Witness. Those are all the questions that I wanted to ask you about this issue of activities. And now I want to move on to another topic. Now, you'll recall from earlier today that the international prosecutor has asked you several questions concerning the existence of an enemy policy. I would like to ask you about a meeting that you described in your written statements, but which has not yet been discussed today. Do you, Mr. Witness, recall attending a meeting at Barai District where your district deputy secretary announced what kinds of people would be considered as enemies? Mr. President, with your leave, I propose to read a section of the witness's DC CAM interview to try to refresh his memory. Uh, the document that I'll be reading from is, once again, E3-9149, the DC CAM interview, and the ERNs I will be reading from are, in English, 01-11-6151, in Khmer, 00731250, and in French, 
Mr. Witness, as I just explained, this will be an extract from your statement to the investigators from the Documentation Centre of Cambodia. And here is the quote. quote. My district secretary, I'm um, sorry, my deputy secretary of Barai district made a public announcement that people who broke a plough, a harrow or an ox cart would be considered as the enemy. Those who did not go to work were also considered the enemies. Unquote. Mr. Witness, does this refresh your memory about a meeting at Barai District in which your district deputy secretary announced what kind of people would be considered to be enemies? Mr. Witness, Mr. Witness, do you remember how you reacted to this announcement by your Deputy District Secretary? Thank you, Mr. Witness. Do you recall what your announcement was? Mr. Witness, I'm not sure we're understanding each other fully, so uh, to assist the process, I'm going to read to you again a little further from your DCK statement where you elaborated in some detail on what your announcement was. Mr. President, once again, this is E3-9149. The ERNs are the same as last time, but just for the reference, it is 0111-6151 in English. 00731250 in Khmer, and in French it is 01101036. Mr. Witness, this is what you told to DC Camp. I could not tolerate such an announcement, so I called all the people in the whole commune to a meeting. There were about 500 or 600 people who came to that meeting. I said that the reason people stole cassavas and rice was because they were poor and hungry. They were hungry because we could not produce enough food to feed them. It was not right to accuse people of being enemies because a plough was broken. Unquote. Mr. Witness, does this refresh your memory about the announcement that you made at a subsequent meeting? Mr. Witness, in the DC camp statement, you say that not only did you attend such a meeting, but you were the one that made the announcement explaining that you could not tolerate the way that your Deputy District Secretary had defined enemies. Does that refresh your memory? Is that what happened? Thank you, Mr. Witness. I think we understand each other. Now. And after you made this announcement, were you punished?
rừng đi hai tan lốc miền tổ tua cả đã toàn là cam thế đã toàn là cam lốc thế bạn ăn thế ăn miệt lại Do you know why not? Did somebody say Mày something to um, Hai đấy bạn chưa kia mình đã toàn là cam một lời rụp lốc miền này nạp rạp lốc đi Ất đây bạn Ất miền này nạp rạp đi Ok, thank you Mr. Witness Mày tui bí, ở con lục xa xấy Further down in your DCK interview You elaborate a little bit more about this meeting where you made this announcement to the people So I would like to read you those details now and see how you can comment on this Mr. President, again, this is 839149 And the ERNs are the same as last time, except for the Khmer, which is now 00731251. Mr. Witness, this is what you told DCK. And this is regarding this meeting at which you made the announcement. This was my own initiative. He, and here I think you're referring to your district deputy secretary, reported on me to the upper level. But he was not successful. My idea was in line with that of the zone and higher echelon. I took the upper echelon's position that wherever the livelihood of the people was better, he who was in charge of that place was doing a good job. Unquote. So, Mr. Witness, my question is as follows. You say that your idea was in line with the zone and the higher echelon. And then you talk about the upper echelon's position when it came to the livelihood of the people. What I would like to know is, can you tell us more about what your understanding of the upper echelon's position was? Can you elaborate any more on the statement that you made earlier to DCK, where you described it as follows, wherever the livelihood of the people was better, he who was in charge of that place was doing a good job. What do you mean by livelihood of the people? I would like to know what you mean by livelihood of the people. I would like to know what you mean by livelihood. And how did you know that this was the upper echelon's position? Lúc xa xây lúc dùm nụ đi, xong chả lại Bạn đôi chứa Dô lấy bạn, bạn chả lại Đôi chùm rượu khăn đau, bạn lúc có thêm Ok, Mr. Witness. So my question was not about the upper echelon's position as such, but about how you knew of it. Was it because you heard it at a meeting? Did you read it in a document? Can you comment on this? Can you comment on this?
Thank you, Mr. Witness. When you talk about messages delivered from the zone and sector level, how were these messages delivered? Were they delivered in telegrams? Are you talking about meetings? Can you elaborate? And just one last question on this, and then we'll move on to the next line of questioning. When you talk about meetings at the sector level, can you tell me who attended those meetings? Thank you, Mr. Witness. So now I'm going to move on to my next line of questioning, and I'm going to ask you a little bit more about the upper echelon, but I'm going to be moving away from your experience in Bari District to focus on your earlier experience in Tangkok District. Now, Mr. Witness, earlier this afternoon, the international prosecutor referred to the fact that in Tetsambat's book, Behind the Killing Fields, you spoke about a meeting with Pol Pot during the DK period. Now, I understand that you said that you do not recall that meeting, but I want to try to see if I can refresh your memory on that point by reading you the passage from the book that the prosecutor was not able to read earlier. Mr. President, I will be referring here to the book Behind the Killing Fields, which was mentioned earlier today. The document number is E3-4202. It's Book by Gina Chun and Tetsun Bak from 2010. And the ERNs I will be reading from are in English 0075529, in Khmer 00858335, and in French 0084942. Mr. Witness, this is what is recorded in the book by Chon and Sambat, according to an interview with you. Quote, During a visit by Pol Pot, Brother Number One saw dozens of people being transported in trucks to Kampong Cham province. They were headed to their execution. Pol Pot asked where the people were being taken and who had given the order to move them. You, it says your name here, but we're not going to see that in court. You said in an interview that you were surprised Pol Pot didn't know. He had assumed, you had assumed, that is, that Brother Number One had given the directive. Mr. Witness, I hope you could follow that quote. My question here is now, what I'm interested in, Mr. Witness, is what you said about Pol Pot. And what I would like to know is, is it correct that, according to what you knew, Pol Pot did not seem to know where dozens of people were being taken and who had given the order to move them? No problem, Mr. Witness. I will move on to my next, and I think it's my last line of questions. So the questions now are going to be referring back to another issue that was discussed by the international prosecutor this morning, namely the so-called purges of the North Zone. Mr. Witness, I would like to start by discussing with you part of your DC CAM interview, which the prosecutor has already discussed with you today, and he also played part of this interview to you in an audio clip. 
bear with me. I would like to read you the quote again to refresh your memory, and I'll be asking you about different aspects of this quote. Mr. President, this is the DC CAM interview again. It is E3-9149. The ERNs I will be referring to in this case are, in English, 01 in Khmer, 00731253. And in French, the ERN is 01101039. Mr. Witness, here is the discussion. I quote to you. Quote, the interviewer Long Dani says, so when you were a district secretary, did the sector order you to remove it? You answer, I argued with the old cadres in Barai district. They intimidated me in my district because there was no removal of the old cadres under my watch. The old cadres had to be removed and they asked why I had not removed them. I asked them as to how I could remove them if they led the people and had never opposed us or had any conflict. So I found no reason to remove them. I I said that three or five times. Mr. Witness, and then you say a little later, quote, there were orders from the upper echelon to arrest those who opposed us, unquote. Mr. Witness, the part of this comment of yours that I'm interested in is the very last part, when you say that there were orders from the upper echelon to arrest those who opposed us. Uh, in this regard, my first question is, do you remember how you received this order from the upper echelon to arrest those who opposed us? As before, for example, was it a meeting? Was it in a document you received? Can you comment? Mr. Witness, I understand that you did not issue the order. Who do you know who issued the order then? Since it was not you, is it these people from the sector that came to the area that you're talking about, or is it someone else? And do you recall who from the sector came to the area? And just for confirmation, Eun is the sector secretary, is that correct? And do you recall how often he came to your area? Mr. Witness, I And what did he do when he came to the area? Mr. Witness, I'm going to go back to the area. And apart from these 
visits by the sector secretary Un to your area. Did you also have communication with him when he was in another location? Did you, for example, did you communicate back and forth about what was happening in the area in between his visits every 20 days? Thank you, Mr. Witness. Now, my final questions relate to another part of the book, Behind the Killing Fields, that you discussed with the prosecutor earlier. And this is the part where you talk about receiving a list of more than 300 names. Now, I know that as you uh, testified to the prosecutor, you do not remember receiving such a list. But what I would like to do is to read the quote back to you again to see if I can refresh your memory, as I would like to ask you different kinds of questions about this quote. Mr. President, this is the book Behind the Killing Fields again by Chon and Samba from 2010. The document number is E3-4202 and the ERA are in English 00757529 in Khmer 00858353 and in French 00849432 Mr. Witness, you've heard it before, but here is the quote again. Quote, in 1977, Kepal called him to a meeting, him is you in this case, I believe, and said that you had received instructions from top leaders to investigate their cadre to find bad components. A regional chief gave you a list of more than 300 names of people sent to your area from Phnom Penh. You spent three months investigating the names before you told the region chief that they had done nothing wrong. The region chief blamed you for finding no wrongdoing and accused you of hiding the traitors. Unquote. Mr. Witness, the part that I am interested in this quote is the second part of your statement where you talk about receiving a list from a region chief, reporting to that region chief and subsequently being blamed by that region chief. My first question is, do you remember the name of this region chief that you reported to? Did Ern tell you why you had to investigate the names on the list? Okay, Mr. Witness, let me try it a little bit differently. Did Ern tell you that you had to investigate the names because of an order? And if he did, can you tell me where the order came from, according to Ern? Okay, Mr. Witness. And in the quote that I read you, the final part of it, in the final part of it, you said that the region chief blamed you because you did not find any wrongdoing, and then you were subsequently accused by the region chief of hiding traitors. Now, when you say that the region chief Un blamed you, can you tell me what happened to you? Were you pushed in some way? But. 
And again, did anybody explain to you why? Why nothing happened to you? Thank you very much, Mr. Witness, for your patience. Mr. President, I have no further questions. ລະດັບປີສໍາລັບໃຫ້ຄາດອົງຈຸມຍາປະກາດສໍາລັບ